We are especially lucky to have the next two people join us today at the National Cancer Prevention Workshop. That being Less Cancer's former chairwoman, Donna Eco, and now board member, and also Representative Don Beyer. Congressman Don Beyer is serving in his third term. He was Lieutenant Governor of Virginia from 1990 to 1998, and he was the ambassador to Switzerland under President Obama. Welcome, Donna and Congressman Beyer. Hello, I'm Donna Eco. I am the former board chair and current treasurer and board member of Less Cancer, here to welcome Congressman Don Beyer to Cancer Prevention Workshop. Don serves as the congressman for Virginia's 8th district, which is part of Northern Virginia. He serves on the Science and Technology Committee, as well as the Ways and Means Committee. He has had a distinguished career, first as a businessman, later as Lieutenant Governor of the state of Virginia, and then our ambassador to Switzerland and Liechtenstein under President Obama. He is now serving in Congress is representing Virginia's 8th district. Welcome, Don. Thank you, Don, uh, very much. I want to start by saying how much we have appreciated your support of less cancer throughout the years. Um, you've been a stalwart supporter, and that's something we very much appreciate. Um, you've also been an incredible advocate for healthcare for the most needy and vulnerable, not only in Virginia, but really across the United States. And for that, we are all very grateful. Um, I wanted today to talk a little bit about what we might expect from Congress and the new administration next year. Obviously, there were many changes um, in the administration and also some in Congress. Um, particularly as it comes to issues of public health aside from COVID. Obviously, that is everyone's top priority, but there are other public health issues that will need to be continue to need to be addressed. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what we might be seeing um, rising to the top of the agendas for Congress next year. Thank you, Donna. I think that we should see a real new era in public health in the next couple of years. Uh, Dr. Vivek Murthy has been reappointed as Surgeon General of the United States. And Dr. Murthy, who's uh, much more famous now than he was when he was Surgeon General before because of the COVID crisis, but he's a very thoughtful, um, good doctor, really committed to public health. I also think the American people are in a very different place after every one of us has become an expert on CDC and NIH and the FDA and all the different things that the COVID crisis has forced us really to focus on. Obviously, the first priority is to get through it, to get the vaccines. Um, I got my first shot uh, recently on, on December 18th, um, not because I was trying to jump in line in front of 800,000 constituents, but rather to try to model the behavior that every one of us should be doing, because there's apparently as many as 30 percent of Americans plan not to get the, the vaccine, which is a great, great danger for everyone and, and certainly for all the rest of us. Um, in terms of, there's so many different specific places where we need to focus public health attention. I think we, we should start by celebrating the remarkable public health success that we have achieved since the late 1960s in smoking in America. Uh, we're now second lowest percentage of our population in the world that smokes. Uh, only Australia beats us. And we've gone from the mid 40s when I was a smoking teenager down to under 15% right now. And, and that's wonderful. And that shows what we can do when we begin to address other needs. One of the ones that jumps out most clearly is um, water and the aging water systems we have throughout the country and the, its implications for cancer. So a major infrastructure bill in 2021, uh, much of it will be devoted to water systems. Um, you know, the old pipes and like Flint, Flint, Flint Michigan, um, I think can be a major step forward. Um, but then we also, um, let me, one more thought, and then I'm, I'm rambling too much, but 25% of our Medicare budget is just dialysis, end stage renal disease. We have 68 million Americans that are pre-diabetic right now. And it is, again, one of the, we don't talk about it very much, one of, one of the great um, dilemmas, health dilemmas in our country. So a, a national public effort to deal with the, the obesity and the lack of exercise that creates this crisis uh, will save an enormous amount. Um, 
Don, do you think there's much of an appetite in Congress for beginning to take a look at the issues caused by PFAS or the forever chemicals that are causing a number of cancer clusters throughout the country? Yes, in fact, uh, our Energy and Commerce Committee has addressed PFAS again and again. Um, it's frustrating that we pass so many constructive bills in the House that die in the Senate. Um, I'm very much hoping that with a different president and maybe even a 50-50 Senate, we can get PFAS through the Senate. Uh, we will keep pressing it because it's an enormous issue for many of the people in the House to understand how deadly it can be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the other issues we've looked at a little bit is childhood nutrition and how that really sets people up, very much what you were saying in terms of obesity, but other health, long-term health issues. Um, do you think there's much of an interest in uh, efforts around childhood nutrition, school lunches, and, and those sorts of issues? Yeah, I, I think so very much. You know, Tom Vilsack is likely to be the next Secretary of Agriculture, but appointed by, by the president-elect. Um, and he didn't really want to do it, but uh, Joe Biden talked him into it because he realized that 80% of the Department of Agriculture is just nutrition. Um, lunch for kids, SNAP programs, uh, and getting that right. I mean, we need the 20%, we've got to grow the food, but uh, getting that right is really, really important. Um, so yeah, I think, and I think there's an ever greater awareness of the link between nutrition and health and, and our, our long-term illnesses. Um, by the way, we have a new agriculture chairman in the House also, and we've had lots of discussions already at focusing on you know, sustainable agricultural practices and getting away from monocrops, mm -hmm. getting away from all the, um, the chemicals that are put in, in, including the pharmaceuticals that are put into crops, uh, and thinking we know so much more about how food affects our health. Absolutely. Um, and the last thing I wanted to touch on, I've been thinking about all the conversations about vaccines, and I think people are all collectively and individually really thinking about vaccines and their importance. One of the places we've seen the most success in cancer prevention has been with the HPV vaccines. Um, this, you know, cervical cancer is actually a cancer that can be eradicated um, or virtually eradicated, and, and that's so exciting. Um, but obviously, it takes um, a lot of education for people to understand the importance of vaccines and the safety. Um, I'm wondering if there is going to be any kind of a rollout of public education around vaccines that might spill over so it's not only COVID, but also HPV and other vaccines? Or do you think we're really setting up for just a big group of anti-vaxxers um, kind of versus science? Where do you see um, that playing out? Yes and yes. Um, I'm fascinated by the incredible success of the HPV vaccine. Yeah. I remember it was a little controversial with daughter. Um, you know, people are saying, well, you're just preparing them to have premature sex. It's like, no, no, we're, we're, we're protecting them. And now we discover that every teenage boy needs to get it also. And how important it is, not just for young women, but for young men. And not just for the sexually active. Um, so that, that's a wonderful success. Um, on the vaccine overall, I, I think we're really looking forward to the cancer vaccine success with other cancers. Um, as we realize that cancer has many different causes, and some of them are going to be amenable to a vaccine approach. Uh, the COVID crisis has, in a good way and a bad way, um, really elevated the understanding of many Americans about how important vaccines are. Um, now many Americans understand herd immunity. They understand how vaccines are put together. But the really small, nascent anti-vax community which all led from, from a disbarred doctor's study theory that vaccine caused autism, which has been disproven hundreds of times, um, has now grown um, with the, the COVID vaccine. It's something that's fairly significant. Um, even today, we're dealing with all these members of Congress who say they're never going to get the vaccine. And unfortunately, that puts everyone else at risk. The good news is there's money in the budget that we're about to pass. Uh, hopefully we pass when people are watching this. A significant uh, amount of money for vaccine education uh, and for public education, working with the National Advertising Council and others. 
Um, and we're going to just have to push back as hard as we can. Sadly, in American history, there's always been a strain of anti-science. In the know nothings, the Luddites, the um, I'm not sure quite where it comes from. Maybe it's because rebels came to this country in the first place from wherever they were, were from. Um, but we have to work really hard to make sure that the science is ascending. Well, um, I just want to conclude by thanking you again for your time today, for all you do, not only for less cancer, but for the United States and uh, for all the good work that's being done in Congress. It's often easy for us to look at the things that aren't going well with the makings of government, but I so appreciate you highlighting for us all the things that are going well and all the progress that you are making. Um, and particularly in things that can help us with cancer prevention, which is obviously our focus today. Um, I well, Donna, I'm, I'm gonna thank you too and, and all the work you're doing. I, I lost a, a younger sister to breast cancer a few years ago, which was on the sad side, but on the very positive side. I have one cousin and one ex-brother-in-law, both of whom were diagnosed with very serious, what would have always been fatal cancers in years past. Both of them are doing great because of all the research and the applied stuff that you guys do. Great. Well, thank you so much. And we appreciate you being with us today.